What's up guys and welcome to another video. Over the last 10 or 11 months, I've been filming so much content with my Subaru BRZ and various other owner submitted cars as well as press cars that I have definitely neglected the other car in my garage. And that of course is my 1991 Acura NSX. I've owned this car for almost six years now. Can't believe I'm saying that. And yet I bought the car with 108,000 miles and now I'm just at 120,000. So a little less than 12,000 miles in six years. I'm kind of ashamed to admit that since in the past I've stated that the NSX is such a daily friendly car considering how old it is and yet I barely drive it. That's all about to change. I'm finally gonna be investing some time, money, and effort into this old Acura. So in this video, I'm gonna revisit the NSX in its current form, which is 99% stock. Talk to you guys about the driving dynamics, where it excels and where it has some major shortcomings, and talk about some of the parts that I'll be installing very soon in partnership with a local Bay Area shop, and hopefully get this thing on track to see if this car can still still feel fun to drive and competent over 30 years after it was released. The sponsor for this video today is Insta360. The Insta360 ONE RS Twin Edition is a two-in-one camera intended for the audience that wants to try the best of both worlds. It comes with two lenses, including the action-ready 4K boost lens and a 360-degree lens that lets you be really creative with your filming. The action B-roll in this video was shot with both lenses, so you can see for yourself. I love the versatility of this camera because you can so easily switch lenses on the fly. The 4K boost lens has a half inch 48 megapixel sensor with amazing image quality that can be used in photo mode, video mode, or even in HDR video mode. The 360 lens is 5.7K resolution and it makes creative impossible shots super easy to film. You just shoot first and you point later. I'm using it on my NSX with the invisible selfie stick that gives us these amazing third person shots. The camera also features flow state state stabilization that gives near gimbal-like stabilization within the body of the camera. From November 21st through the 30th, as part of their Black Friday sale, Insta360 will be offering discounts on their wide range of cameras and accessories. If you purchase through my custom affiliate link in the video description, you'll receive an extra 1RS battery base for free. Now back to the video. All right, so my 1991 Acura NSX, 120,000 miles on the odometer. And yeah, I've only put less than 8,000 miles on it in six years. I'm ashamed, okay? I'm ashamed. This car is meant to be driven. It's a great GT from the factory. It's comfortable, it's refined. And yeah, I just haven't done it justice, but that all is about to change in 2023. I'm finally in a place where I can actually modify this car to my liking and enjoy it on road and track. But first things first, let's talk about some of the things I love about this NSX. All I have on this car in terms of mods is a set of 17 and 18 inch staggered Advan wheels with Falcon 615K plus tires, some Winmax W3 pads front and rear on stock calipers and rotors, Momo 350 millimeter tuner steering wheel, and this Science of Speed shift knob, which is a replica of the Type S shift knob. We also have this custom installed Defi ZD gauge that the previous owner installed behind the stock radio screen that allows me to monitor my oil water temps battery voltage fuel pressure oil pressure and of course my pride v2 rfl really effing loud exhaust that's it in terms of mods this car is pretty much a stock nsx in terms of driving feel so what do i love about the nsx the manual steering rack in the 91 to 94 model years in the u.s it's brimming with feedback. You feel every bump in the road. And when you're cornering hard, it really loads up nicely and you can feel exactly what the front end is doing. But that being said, it does have a very slow steering ratio and it can get a bit heavy at times. Now, let me open it up for you on the straight and experience this three liter VTEC V6. That's the other thing I love about this NSX, this engine. It is unique in the world of Honda engines in that it's the only time Honda ever made a true VTEC V6. Even a three and a half liter turbocharged V6 in the NC1 generation NSX doesn't have the same character, nor does it make the same sound 
as this original C30A. Although it only makes 270 horsepower and 210 pound-feet of torque, it's brimming with character. It's just got such a linear power band. You don't really feel the VTEC engagement, which kicks in at 5,000 RPM, but it does pull noticeably harder here it's 8,000 RPM red line, so it really rewards you for winding it out. Oh man, I'm kicking myself in the foot right now for not taking this thing out on chore rides more often. <laughs> got amazing mid-engine balance for days. This car has its original limited slip differential, which is definitely starting to show signs of age. I actually tracked this NSX at Sonoma Raceway not too long ago and got quite a bit of one tire fire coming out of corners. Also, I think the NSX stock suspension is commonly misunderstood. When this car was first released in the 90s, this suspension setup got a lot of praise from journalists who often said it was a good balance of comfort, everyday drivability, as well as giving you a reasonable amount of control in the corners. Nowadays, the stock NSX suspension is often criticized for being far too soft and far too sloppy. Now, here's where I beg to differ. I think in stock form, the NSX isn't necessarily a car that wants to be pushed to 100% of its limit. I enjoy driving this car the most at around 70 to 80 percent, where I'm not trying to get gobs of oversteer around every corner, but rather just kind of feeling what the steering's doing, feeling how the chassis responds, enjoying this amazing five-speed manual, and listening to that V6 sing behind my head. In those conditions, I think the stock suspension does a pretty good job. It does have a soft spring rate and exhibits a lot of body roll in the corners, but hey, so does a brand new ND2 Miata. It's a car that lets you know what it's doing well in advance, which is befitting of its GT character. This car was originally designed as a grand touring sports car. Over 30 years after its release, it still does a great job at being comfortable and compliant on a daily basis. <laughs> From 5,000 to 8,000 RPM, this engine just sings. But that being said, if I'm trying to enjoy this car more in the canyons and hopefully on the racetrack next year, I do need to address this super soft suspension. And that's exactly what I'll be doing. I'm working with a local Bay Area shop on a custom set of coilovers for the NSX that'll still hopefully give me plenty of compliance for daily driving, but also really tighten this thing up in the corners. Another big drawback with the NSX, of course, is its stock brakes. Because this car originally came with 15 inch front and 16 inch rear wheels and tires. Now that I'm on 17 inch and 18 inch wheels, I can actually fit a big brake kit. That's exactly what I'll be doing alongside the coilovers. A front big brake kit as well as a rear to maintain that front to rear brake bias. So those are some of the things that I'll be doing to the car very soon, but I definitely don't plan to stop there. Another one of my gripes with this car is that the North American market got this five speed with a different gear ratio than the JDM counterpart. The second gear in this car goes all the way up to 81 miles an hour on stock wheels and tires. So with my 17 and 18 inch wheels, I'm probably well over 82, 83 miles an hour. That gearing is way too tall for a car with 270 horsepower. So I will be on the hunt for a JDM five speed gear set as well as a JDM type R final drive. I've driven a couple of NSXs with the gear set and that final drive swapped in and it completely transforms the acceleration as well as just the enjoyment you get from rowing through the gears without going into triple digit speeds. I'm always puzzled when people say the original NSX seat is one of the best seats ever and that every manufacturer should model after this seat for their sports cars. Frankly, I don't think it's that comfortable. It doesn't give me that much support in the corners. So I do have a Recaro RSG seat. It's just a matter of me getting the correct rail and getting that thing installed. 
At some point, I'm planning to swap out these Advan wheels as well. I don't plan to do any power mods, no superchargers or turbochargers here. I really enjoy the stock throttle response with this NA engine. Oh, by the way, I also have a June lightweight flywheel installed. It's a mild mod, but it does allow the engine to rev up and down a little bit quicker. So let me know what you guys think about my plans for the NSX. It's not going to be my primary daily or track car by any means. That's why I have the BRZ, but I do plan to enjoy it a lot more frequently than I have for the past few years. Are there any mods I'm missing for you NSX junkies and NSX owners out there? What other mods do you think I should install in this thing? Which ones have you found to be worthy? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more NSX content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.